Howdy, howdy. Um, before I start, um, as you heard, I've traveled quite a bit. Um, I speak all over the world. You guys have some really good talent in this room. I am very, very impressed with the level of the presentations I've seen thus far. So I'm absolutely blown away, amazed. I'm going to have to step my own game up here. Uh, so hats off to the folks here um, and to the organizers. It's an amazing event. Um, I figure I will, uh, I will start the whole TED concept, right? It's ideas worth sharing. And the idea I want to share with you today is an idea I've been sharing for about 20 years. When I got started in this space, we literally used to beg people to pay attention to the idea. We had to like ask. We would pay to go and talk to people praying that they would listen just a little bit to what we had to say. But over that 20 year period, the world shifted quite a bit, favorably, because now people pay us to go and talk about this stuff. So that's kind of a good thing. But a couple years ago, something happened, and it made the idea that I want to share with you, it made the idea even more important. I've now got two little girls, ages seven and nine. And the idea I want to share with you is because it's an idea that they need for their future. Okay? So here's the idea. It's the simple notion that absolutely everything that you buy, everything that you buy, the clothes you're wearing, the shoes you're wearing, the carpet you're the the lights, the car you drove here, every single thing that you buy has hidden human health, environmental, and social impacts. Everything you buy has hidden human health, environmental, and social impacts. So I mentioned my two little girls at least once, ages seven and nine. It's an idea that they actually understand. It's an idea that's actually important to the world that they will inherit. And part of the idea is something I learned way back in school when I was their age. Back when I was their age, I had teachers who told me, someday you can grow up and change the world. Someday you can make a difference. But I didn't realize how easy it is to make a difference. Because when you start thinking about it, everything you buy has hidden human health, environmental, and social impacts. That means your everyday purchasing decisions are determining what kind of world my two little girls will inherit. So let's start with a very simple example. A simple t-shirt, much like the one I'm wearing. When you go to the store, you actually have a choice. You can buy the absolute cheapest shirt there, $2.99, or you might pay $3.99 for a shirt that looks remarkably similar. They don't look any different, but there's a huge world of differences that I'd like to share with you. So when you ask someone, where does a t-shirt come from? Most people say, the store. But that's not the whole story. I want to kind of walk you through the history of the t-shirt. You've got to start with cotton. You start with cotton. How do you grow cotton? Well, the interesting thing, cotton requires for the cotton in a one t-shirt, one t-shirt takes between 600 and 2,000 gallons of water for the cotton in my t-shirt. It takes about a third of a pound of insecticides and pesticides and fertilizers so that cotton can flourish and actually become a t-shirt. There are parts of the country where people are actually forced to work picking cotton. They are not there by choice. They are not getting paid. They're simply forced. Some of the people picking cotton for the t-shirts you can find in local stores are children, my girl's age. These children are not in school because they're being forced to work. They're being forced to pick the cotton so I can have a cheap t-shirt. 
the cotton gin we've heard about, right? Good old Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin. Cotton gins are now big and huge industrial, right? Picking the seeds and things out of the cotton. But in many of the mills where this is done, there's enormous amounts of dust. These cotton gins are in countries like India and Pakistan and China, and there's enormous amounts of dust generated. The workers in those factories have no health protections at all, no safety equipment at all. You can actually track people getting sick, lung diseases, from the dust in the air so that I can have a cheap t-shirt. Spinning thread, right? You see this all over the place here in Burt's County, how you turn cotton into thread, right? They do it in big, huge industrial scales. Again, frequently being employing people that are forced to be there, including children, just to make the thread. You turn it into fabric, right? You've seen how you people make fabric, big, huge factories, again, Incident after incident where what you find out is that the people working in the factories aren't choosing to be there, they're forced to be there. Young children working in the factories. So once you have the fabric, you actually have to dye it to get the pretty color. You see the nice blue of my t-shirt. The interesting thing is some of the chemicals that are being used to create the cotton shirt I'm wearing, some of the chemicals being used are actually banned in Europe. Some of the t-shirts that we wear here in the United States would be illegal in Europe because of the hazardous materials in the dyes or the chemicals used to make the cotton feel nice and soft on my skin. Yet we have workers playing with these with their bare hands with no protective equipment or anything. The garment factories where they actually turn my t-shirt into something that resembles a t-shirt Big, huge factories, again, very, very low wages. In some parts of the world, people do have factory housing where they might fit 15 people in a room the size of your bedroom to make the garment that you're wearing. And again, children are frequently found working in these factories. Girls, the ages of my children, so that I can have a cheap, inexpensive t-shirt. Now. Here's the fun thing. Those are the products that end up in the Berkshire Mall. When we go to the store, we actually get to choose what kind of world we want. We can actually go to the store and look for the absolute cheapest product there is. We can choose to ignore how those products are made. We can choose to ignore the environmental impacts. We can choose to ignore the fact that kids my age might be the ones making that product. Or we can choose to ask some tough questions. We can ask, where was this t-shirt made? How was it made? Who made it? Is it organic cotton? What about the dyes that are used in it? We actually have a choice. Because we can say, you know what? It's just not fair to have little girls in factories when they should be in school. We can say it's just not fair to put chemicals in my clothes that are illegal in other countries, that are harming the workers and that might be harming me. When you're at the store, you actually have a choice in the kinds of things that you buy. And the company that I work for um, actually helps track these kinds of issues. I work for a company called Underwriters Laboratories, UL, and among the things that we do are actually test products, the chemical content of the products. We find out how the products were made, where they were made. We actually inspect factories to find out, are children being employed? Are people being forced to work 18-hour days? We actually check and find out what's in the product, where is it made, how is it made? So a simple t-shirt isn't always so simple. A t-shirt like this, for example, might have a pound of cotton, a third a pound of fertilizers, 2,000 gallons of water, some pretty hazardous chemicals. They waste about 15% of the material in making the shirt. Forced labor, child labor. How would you know? If you knew, would you buy something different? Would you pay $3.99 for the t-shirt instead of $2.99? What we're in the process of doing 
is trying to identify all of these hidden human health and environmental impacts and make it easier for you when you go to the mall to buy a better future. But the crazy thing is, if I go to the store and I choose to buy an organic t-shirt, an organic cotton t-shirt, fair trade labor, meaning making sure people have actually been paid a living wage in order to produce the garments, right? It's not over there. It still depends on what happens when I take it home. Because it turns out, despite all of these interesting hidden impacts, the biggest impact, even if I buy an organic shirt, the biggest impact is when I do laundry, right? Am I washing in hot water? Am I washing only one garment at a time? Am I putting a full load in? Am I not putting a full load in? What kind of detergent am I using? Do I hang it on the clothesline afterwards? Or do I put it in a dryer, which uses lots of energy? Turns out my t-shirt has environmental impacts even once I get it home. And then what happens? What do I do with it when the t-shirt doesn't fit or it's a little bit discolored or I spill spaghetti sauce on it? I throw it in the garbage can and where does it end up? Everything <laughs> we do, every purchase we make and the decisions we make after that purchase have hidden human health, environmental, and social impacts. What we've just talked about is what's known in the business as a life cycle perspective. You can look at the environmental impacts, the social impacts, the human health impacts throughout every phase and the development of absolutely anything. I can tell you that the average US person's consumption of hamburgers produces as much global warming as a typical SUV. There are hidden human health, environmental, and social impacts everywhere. From the phone in your pocket, the mines where those metals were collected, the impacts of the energy use, the fuel use in the car, or the hazardous materials in the baby dolls that our kids play with. What my company is trying to do is make it easier for people to buy better products to give you the power to actually look for products that are more environmentally friendly, more socially responsible, and healthier for you as an individual. You can actually look for environmental certification claims um, from Underwriters Laboratory. We have EPDs, environmental product declarations. What those try and do is actually measure all of the environmental impacts, all of those hidden human health, environmental, and social impacts. Measure them and make them easy to use. But we've gotten fancier here recently because we now actually have a phone application. You can take your phone shopping with you, and when you see a t-shirt hanging there or <coughs> laundry detergent hanging there or a pair of shoes or carpet or paint, you can scan the barcode with your phone, and it will actually report to you all sorts of environmental information. You can find out who made that product. You can find out what hazardous materials are in it. You can find out, has it been made in a factory that we know does not have slave labor in it? You can find out, did children make this product? Simply scanning the product's uh, barcode with your phone. These little girls are in my Girl Scout troop, all right? I'm just the cookie mom, actually. No one else is scout troop. I am the cookie mom. These issues that we've just described, you can do it with everything. We talked about a t-shirt. But you can do it with anything. I spend my life traveling around the world talking with CEOs about the hidden impacts of their supply chains, talking with people at big retailers about where do those clothes come from, what's in those cleaning products. The toughest group of people I ever talked about this with is right here in these photos. <laughs> All right? And here's why. How many of you were Girl Scouts? All right. How many of you sold cookies? All right. Girl Scouts sell cookies to raise money. I have a couple of, of top salespeople, one of my absolute top. Her name is Amaya Shaw. She's up here in the corner, purple jacket, not looking at the camera. I'm not sure why. Amaya Shaw, top seller, more than 300 boxes. K 
came to me last year, right before the cookie sale, and said, Mr. Case, I can't sell cookies this year. And I said, am I? Why? And she said, well, Mr. Case, my daddy gets the Wall Street Journal. And there was a story in the Wall Street Journal about the fact that Girl Scout cookies have palm oil in them. And that where they grow palm oil, they actually end up harming orangutan's habitat. And in fact, that's what's happening in many places of the world. They're mowing down forests to plant palm trees. And you end up with a lot of uh, orangutans without any place to live, without any food to eat. And Amaya Shaw said, I can't do that. I don't want to harm the orangutans. Turned out there were Girl Scouts across the country who were, in fact, focused on these very issues. There we go. So then my daughter, Lillian, says, Daddy, you don't really want me hurting the orangutans, do you? <laughs> wow. Wow. Every single purchase, every single purchase has hidden human health, environmental, and social impacts. And it is so obvious a group of eight and nine-year-old girls understands it and can ask about it. We had a meeting as a troop. We had to talk about the pros and cons, what we do with the money, why we sell the cookies, why do they have sustainable, unsustainable palm oil in them, what do we do as a troop? Amaya and the girls got together and said, you know what we'll do? We will sell the cookies because we need the money to go camping and things, but we will also collect money for the orangutan habitat. All right? Now, interestingly, this is them. That's Lillian and Charlotte, my little girls, and Amaya Shaw, who is in the back of the room, by the way. Amaya, wave real fast. There you go. There's Amaya. All right? These girls ended up, that picture even in the Red Eagle, a little story about them kind of spreading the word. But here's the important point. They asked questions. They wrote a letter. They asked questions. And the Girl Scouts have changed. This is the latest box of Girl Scout cookies. I picked it up at a meeting just last night because I am the cookie mom. The interesting thing about this box of Girl Scout cookies and all of the boxes of Girl Scout cookies is if you turn to the side and you look closely, what you will see there on the right is green palm sustainability. Because what the Girl Scouts decided is the last thing they wanted was a bunch of their Girl Scouts griping about how cookies were made. So they, in fact, found a way to reduce the hidden human health, environmental, and social impacts of those cookies. Purchasing choices. People asking better questions about what's in the product, how is it made, and what can we do different. So it's not a simple t-shirt. It's not a simple t-shirt. What we are trying to do is make sure people understand that you can, in fact, buy a better world. But you can only buy a better world if you're asking the right questions. Where was this made? How was it made? Who made it? What's in it? Our company's goal is to make sure people have the tools to ask those kinds of questions, to get answers to those kinds of questions. But the ultimate power is up to you to make better purchasing decisions. Be the Amaya Shaw, the person who says, this isn't right. What can we do to improve it? If a nine-year-old girl can do it, you can do it. And as a dad of two little girls, have I mentioned them yet? <laughs> as a dad of two little girls, what I know is that the world they inherit is largely dependent on the actions that you take. So thank you very much for the time.